In this video, I'd like to talk about a search algorithm called Dijkstra's search. Now, Dijkstra's search is also sometimes called uniform cost search. Dijkstra is spelled like this, D-I-J-K-S-T-R-A, apostrophe, search. And as I mentioned, this is also sometimes called uniform cost search. Now, Dijkstra's search has some benefit over doing a simple breadth-first search for graph data structures. If we imagine a graph that might look something like this, here's our connected graph. If we were to do a breadth-first search on this, remember our breadth-first search would expand out in all directions evenly. So as an example, if this was our goal node or our start node here, and this was our goal node, our breadth first search would stir, first explore these two, and then these two, and then these two, as well as that one, and then finally reach our goal. With Dijkstra's search, it gives us the added benefit of allowing to add weights to each of our edges or potentially to each of our nodes, depending on how the data in your game or your simulation or whatever your project is, is established. This is can be frequently used for something like um, airline travel. So imagine that these are all different cities and that it actually takes different amount of time to travel between one connection, between one node and another over a connection like this or over an edge. With Dijkstra's search, it allows us to consider those values, those connection weights, as they're commonly called, with each of those edges. So if this was our start node, and let's just add some weights to each of these paths here, each of these edges, something like this. Now I've established that each of these edges has a certain cost associated with them, which is equal to the weight of them, right? Sometimes this is used as just distance. Um, sometimes this can be something else. You notice that this node here, uh, around it, these have a much higher cost. There's a four, there's a three, there's a two. In a video game, we might use these higher weights like this to represent something like this area is difficult terrain. This area is currently on fire. This area here, someone just threw a grenade or um, it's something else that we want to deter our AI from actually navigating through this area. And even though it might be a shorter path or a fewer number of nodes to go from here directly up to this other position, instead, what we'd want to happen is we want our AI to go all the way around. It's more nodes, but it's a lower total cost. The way that this algorithm works is very similar to breadth first search. The only difference is that we are going to turn our frontier into a priority queue. So previously, previously our frontier would be the list of nodes that we need to explore next. And we would also just sort of put these in into like a regular queue and then just process them one by one. With Dijkstra's search, we're going to put them in based on the cost of that node or the cost to traverse to that node. Let's do a quick example. Let's say that this is our start node and that this is our goal node. Our start node, node number one, is going to go into our frontier with a value of zero. There's no cost to start there. Next, we're going to add nodes two and three with the total cost it takes to get there. Two costs one to get there, to traverse over that edge. Node three costs two to traverse over that edge. Here's our node IDs, as well as the cost of uh, the total cost or weight of them in the frontier. Now we've processed node one. Let's process the next node. This is what the important part of Dijkstra's algorithm is, is processing the node that is the lowest total cost. Node two, has a cost of one. We're gonna process that one next or explore that node next. Two is connected to node four up here. The value between two and four, the weight here is one. However, when we put it into our frontier, we need to consider the total cost that it takes to get to node four through node two, which means that the value here that we're gonna put four in, the total weight total cost in the frontier is equal to the new edge, which is a value of one, plus what it took to get here where we are now, 
which is we're currently at node 2, and it took 1 to get there. So the total value that we put into the frontier with node 4 is 2. An interesting point about this. Our start node added node 3 with a value of 2. If we go through node 2 over here, it also has a value of 2. right? Previously with breath for a search, we would just disregard this connection because node 3 is already into our frontier. In the situation where the node has a lower connection than previously in there. So I just updated this cost here, this edge weight, to have a value of 3, which means that when our start node put node 3 in, this value here would have a value of 3, right? something like that. The interesting thing that Dijkstra's algorithm does is here we just found a shortcut. We found a faster way to get to node 3. Going through node 2 means that we only have a total cost of 2, right? 1 from 1 to 2 and 1 from 2 to 3. So in this case, what we would do is we would swap 3 out with a total cost of 2 because we found a shortcut. Interesting thing about Dijkstra's search is that it can find these alternative routes as it's already traversing through the algorithm. So Dijkstra's search gives us the added benefit of having weights on each of our edges. It finds us the lowest total cost associated with a, uh, with a path from a start to a goal, not the lowest number of nodes from a start to a goal. It also finds us these shortcuts. So you may find that your AI is exploring different paths based on, uh, based on these lower costs. Those are all the benefits to Dijkstra's search.